Welcome back to the Edgewater Avenue YouTube channel. Today we are making the Presley Bottoms. This pattern comes with a few different options. So in this tutorial today, I'm gonna to be showing you two different ways to make them. When I do this type of thing all in one video, I try not to repeat myself too much. So if you're a beginner, I do recommend watching the very first tutorial. That's where I'm gonna be talking about just different tips like elastic, basting stitches, and that type of thing. So just be sure to watch that first tutorial, even if you're gonna be making the version in the second one, just so you have that background information if you do need it. So let's get started. The materials for both tutorials will be the same, so we're just gonna go over this one time. You're going to need swimwear fabric. This is an excellent style to use scraps with since the pieces are really small, but if you need to use a full piece of fabric, you'll need about a quarter of a yard. Quarter inch swimwear elastic. Here I'm using the elastic that I sell on my website. You will need a seam ripper, a loop turner, there are lots of straps in this one. You'll need a cutting tool like a rotary cutter. And I also recommend having scissors as well, because again, with all those straps, we are gonna be doing a lot of trimming. You'll want to have pins or clips because again, straps, there's a lot. <laughs> and specifically, I'd say if you can get access to sewing clips, those are gonna be the way to go, just to make sure you don't poke yourself too much. And I will link the clips that I use in the description. Then the last handy little tool you might want is an acrylic ruler. This makes cutting the straps a lot easier and just more precise. I have a complete tool list of all the things that I use, everything from sewing machines to elastic to fabric. That is in the description, so if you're needing some more resources on where to get this stuff and what it does, please visit that link. And I know that this materials list is a lot more than usual. Really, you can just get away with fabric and elastic and scissors. You don't need much more than that. But for the sake of being thorough, I did include everything that I am using for this. The final thing you're gonna need is the PDF pattern for the Presley bottoms. You can grab that now at edgewaterapp.com. Like I said, this pattern comes with a few different options. So just pay close attention to the instructions in the pattern, just to make sure that you're getting the right pattern pieces. All right, let's start with the first tutorial. The first tutorial is for the Presley bottoms in view A. First, we're gonna be cutting our pieces along with our straps. For the pattern pieces, there's a front and a back and you'll want to cut two in each of your pattern pieces. Here I'm making mine reversible, so I picked out two different fabrics and I'm gonna cut one in each pattern piece in each fabric. This pattern is a great one to use up scraps, so definitely take advantage of that if you can. Regardless of how you choose to do it, you should have two in each pattern piece. Now we get to cut all of our straps and there's eight of them. The exact measurements for those straps are inside the pattern. Here is where this acrylic ruler comes in handy. It lets me cut perfectly straight straps and honestly, I could not live without it. Now we have all of our pieces and all of our many straps and we are first gonna sew things up and attach elastic. So for the straps, you're gonna treat them all the same and you're gonna fold them in half lengthwise with right sides together and sew and attach elastic to the raw edges. And then you're gonna match fronts with fronts and backs with backs, right sides together. And you're gonna sew and attach elastic to each of the following areas. Here is a tip that I use all the time before I go in with my serger or zigzag stitch, which we'll get into in a second. I first will use a basting stitch to all of the areas that I just mentioned. And I do this instead of pinning and it serves the same purpose of tacking the fabric together, but with swimwear fabric, it does a much better job than pinning. And just like pins, the basting stitch is a temporary tool. It is meant to be removed or broken. So whether or not you choose to use a basting stitch, the next step is sewing your final stitch. So here I'm gonna be using a four thread overlock stitch. And if you don't have a serger, you can use a zigzag stitch. I have an elastic foot that's gonna help me attach this elastic perfectly. If you'd like some more information on things like how to sew elastic, what kind to buy, where to get it, what is an elastic foot, do I need one? All of those questions are answered in my elastic series. So please go check that out if you need some more information. Now 
Now we have all of our pieces along with the many, many straps that we've made. We are now gonna take out the loop turner and turn every strap to the right side. If you don't have a loop turner, you can use a safety pin instead. So bring your back piece back into the picture and next we're gonna insert our straps. First, I'm gonna separate them out into groups to stay organized. So there are six shorter straps and then there's two longer ones. Three of each of the shorter straps are gonna be going in the sides and then the two longer ones will come out that section on the top. So once you know where everything is going, you can start inserting the straps into their appropriate areas. Here you can really get creative with how you want the straps to be placed. You can even do things like add more straps or make thinner ones or braid them or any of that. But if you plan on doing that, just be aware you might need to tweak the given strap lengths from the pattern. For this pair, I'm gonna be equally spacing my three straps on each of the sides and my two longer straps will hang out at the top. Use as many pins or clips as you need. Do not be afraid to break up this process and just focus on one strap at a time. You can also pre-mark with a pen where you want your straps to go if that's helpful to you. And another tip that might be helpful is instead of using pins or clips, you can sew just a tacking stitch to get your straps in place before you sew the final stitch. Overall, this is tricky to do, so practice a lot, but also don't be afraid to break up the process. Use basting stitches, tacking stitches, an absurd amount of pins, but you'll get the hang of it. Once you're happy with where your straps are going, switch on over to the sewing machine and sew every strap down, which is going to finish off our sides completely. Now I do recommend sewing a straight stitch for this because later we'll go back and be able to trim the excess. This is gonna make our sides come out a lot cleaner and help us avoid any of the bulkiness that can happen if you don't trim up the side seams. Just make sure you're using a straight stitch that you trust because these straps will have plenty of tension pulling on them. I sometimes like to use a secured straight stitch, which is a setting on my machine, but you can accomplish the same thing by back stitching as you're going. So once your straps are all securely sewn in and those side seams are completely done, you can take your scissors and trim the excess. Then take the entire back piece to the right side, double check to make sure you like where your straps are placed, and then you can sew the gusset closed with another basting stitch. So I did that off camera and now I want to insert the back piece inside of the front piece and at the same time align each of the straps where they need to go. Before you start, make sure your right sides are together. Now again, this can be really tricky, so take your time but also don't be afraid to use pins or clips to help you keep everything in order. I like to work one side at a time and then I move on to the gusset. pin or clip, and then again, we're gonna use a straight stitch and sew in the sides once more. And this time we're gonna sew across the gusset too. Once you're done, make sure to trim the excess again. Then take your seam ripper and rip about a one to two inch hole somewhere along an existing seam. Through this hole, take everything to the right side and the final step is finishing off that hole either by top stitching it or using an invisible stitch by hand. We're gonna be doing the reveal in the end, so let's move on to the next tutorial. Now we're moving on to the Presley bottoms in view B. Like I mentioned earlier, I'm not gonna be repeating everything I said in the first tutorial. So if you find that you're needing some additional help and just extra tips, I'd recommend going back and watching that one. But this version is also a lot easier to make because there aren't as many straps. Overall, the directions are actually very similar. It just changes the placement of the straps. So this pattern has two pieces, a front and a back. 
and we're going to cut two in each pattern piece. Then for our straps, we'll need to cut four, and the exact measurements for those are included inside the pattern. Moving on to construction, we're going to fold each of our straps in half and sew and attach elastic onto the raw edges. You'll want to match fronts with fronts, backs with backs, right sides together, and sew and attach elastic to the following areas. I'm using all the same techniques in the last tutorial, like a four thread overlock stitch, and I also did do a basting stitch beforehand just off camera. Then once everything is sewn, you're gonna take each of your straps to the right side using a loop turner or safety pin. We have all our straps ready and now we're going to start inserting them into the back piece. The two longer straps will go at the top opening and the two smaller ones will go inside each of the sides. Make sure your back piece is still inside out for this and just go through and start painting the straps in place. Then once you're happy with the placement, take everything over to your sewing machine and using a straight stitch. Stitch down all the straps in place, which is also going to close up the strap openings completely. Trim the excess with scissors once everything is sewn, and then take the back piece all the way to the right side. At this point, I like to use a basting stitch and sew that gusset closed. This is going to make it easier to attach in the next step. Now with your front piece still inside out, double check that right sides are together and then begin inserting the straps into the sides of the front piece. So here you're going to take one strap from the top and one strap from the side and insert both of those into one side of the front piece. Do this with all four straps using pins or clips as needed. Once the sides are clipped, you're also going to align the gussets. So this way we completely attach the bottoms. And once you're happy with how the straps and the gusset are looking, come back to your sewing machine and straight stitch across each of the sides as well as the gusset. Once that's complete, you'll again trim the excess. Now take a seam ripper and rip a one to two inch hole somewhere along an existing seam. And through this hole, take everything to the right side. The final step is finishing off that hole, either with the top stitch or an invisible stitch by hand. So that completes both pairs of Presley bottoms I made today. Here is how they turned out. These are just so cute and such a great way to use scraps Plus, you can get really creative on how you choose to design these. You can make more straps or less straps, you can make them thinner, you can add rings, the list just goes on. So really more than anything, this is an awesome base pattern for all of those similar designs that kind of mimic the same shape. Thank you for watching this one. Make sure to grab a copy of the Presley Bottoms pattern and I will see you next time.